welcome Apostle Arome Osai. Keep putting your hands together as we receive the man of God. Celebrate the Lord for the grace of God at work in him. If you are here, say amen. The Lord is in the business of equipping his people so that he can fill the gap of missionary manpower. Africa holds the fortunes of the Christian faith at this time. And every African Christian must understand how strategic Christianity on this continent is to Christianity in our generation. Statistics, if those figures mean anything at all, is suggestive of the fact that the church in Africa has the potential to move the kingdom of God forward on earth for, in this current state that it is, for at least another 35 years. So the focus of heaven right now is the African Christian because it is our time of recovery. The gospel of the kingdom in its purest form is supposed to rise from the African continent so that the heart of the African believer will come to terms with the demands of heaven for this critical moment in the history of the household of God. I pray that as God passes by, he will find a heart that is willing, a heart that is ready, so that he can bequeath to you viable seeds that will not die. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we call upon you tonight. And we ask, O oh God, that you might grant that each and every one that is under the sound of my voice we come under the influence of a heavy encounter. Such an encounter that will shape the lives of my brothers and sisters and make them weapons in your hand for the plans that you have concerning the future of the Christian faith in the nation of Ghana and beyond. Make for yourself a great name tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the house of God. Turn your Bible with me quickly to 1 Samuel chapter number 1 as we look to draw wisdom from the scriptures. 1 Samuel chapter number 1. Um, oh, sorry. 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse number 1. Yesterday we saw that the scripture said that the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. We saw how that Simeon, who was a functionary of the kingdom of darkness planted in Samaria, held the ground until Philip the Evangelist was deployed into that territory. We saw that uh, territorial dominion was a game of strength. And if the northern part of Ghana is reckoned to be a place where you find the finest sorcerers, they will hold the ground until men that know Jehovah 
and have capacity to put Jehovah on display will come upon the scene. Book of Acts chapter 8 was an initiative to deploy men to the end that when God saw the state of things, his reaction was not emotional. His reaction was strategic. He decided to abandon a generation and to begin to scout for a new functionary that will stand before his presence. What I'm trying to read to us is an account of how God bypassed an entire generation. His covenant with the nation was still intact, but there was a generation that had backslidden, and with them he could not achieve much. And so he approved the wiping out of that generation so that they can start afresh on a new slate with an upcoming one. Part of the things that God wants to do is to raise a new breed without greed and a radical opposition against unrighteousness. God has analyzed and he has seen that according to the texture of, of the status quo, the kingdom of God is not likely to go so far. Given the current emphasis, the current things that are obtainable in the body of Christ. And so he is on rampage seeking to apprehend the functionary that will bridge the gap and that will launch the full potential of kingdom trust. And that was why God, even though the lamp that the priesthood was supposed to ensure that it never goes out in the temple had gone out, which is symbolic of the fact that the presence of God was no longer in that temple. God found a way under the cover of darkness to reach out to a young fellow and to reveal himself to him. The Bible says, And the ill lamb of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, and the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, here am I. If we go on with the reading, you will see that God called this young man three times. And he went to his mentor. Thinking that it was his mentor that called him. What I think happened is that God called him using the voice of his mentor. He went to his mentor and his mentor said, I did not call you. But the reason why I even started this reading in the first place is because of verse 7. Can you give me verse 7 on the screen? Verse 7 is a commentary on Samuel's state before God began to work on him. You know, yesterday we said the people that do know their God, there are two indicators to suggest that you know God. One is that you are what? Ah, okay. You are forgotten. All right. Now let's go to First Samuel chapter three, verse seven. This is a commentary on Samuel. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. That's the first aspect of the observation. Even though he was on track to knowing the Lord. At this time, he had not yet known the Lord. Even though he had the potential to know the Lord, at this time, he had not yet known the Lord. Even though he was being trained to know the Lord, at this time, he had not yet known the Lord. That's the first thing. And your ability to know the Lord will determine whether you can access the second thing. Are you there? He did not yet know the Lord. That means he could not yet recognize the Lord. It was the Lord that was speaking to him, but because he could not recognize the Lord, the impact of what God was saying was missed upon his life. Now, if you have been 
a consistent Christian for about three years. I want to say that God has been encountering you. However, the impact of the encounters will be consistent upon your ability to recognize the Lord. The problem that Samuel had here was his inability to recognize the Lord. And as long as Samuel could not recognize the Lord, the word of the Lord, the counsel of the Lord, the proceeding word of God was not revealed to him. So, God, how are you? Are you here? God, one of the ways by which, which is the, make, the basic way by which God unveils himself to any individual is through what we call the Daba. Neither was the word of the Lord. The word in Hebrew, translated word in that scripture is Daba. Daba is the same kind of thing that um, Jesus said when the devil was tempting him to turn stones to bread. And Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So the Daba is the proceeding word of God. The Daba is the word that God is saying now. The Daba is the present revelation position of God. Are you with me? Now if God wants to reveal himself, one of the ways he gets himself revealed in, in the most basic fashion is through the Daba. Now, if we have time, which we don't, because it's an evening meeting, I would have shown you that all the prophets that were raised, because if we go through scripture, you will see God's deliberate efforts to bring education to his prophets in the Bible. Deliberate efforts. Sometimes he takes them out. He says, okay, what do you see? Sometimes he takes them out. He even teaches them how to make prophetic decrees, just like um, Ezekiel in the Valley of Dry Bones. There are several efforts that God puts in place in order to equip someone that he wants to use as his instrument. It must be understood that the fundamental, the fundamental approach of God's disclosure of himself so that he, his ways can be understood, his dynamics can be known, is through the Daba world. The problem with the Daba approach is that, first of all, you must be trained, your receptacles must be trained to be able to recognize God before you will be in a position to be able to articulate the Daba. Are you there? Now, we are going on a journey. Oh, I, I'm seeing you are not interested. All right, sir. So. Um, we will keep modifying the syllables because of your non-interest to ensure that we save time. Are you still with me? The problem with the approach of revealing God through the proceeding word of God is that you will need some form of competence competence in being able to recognize God first. If you cannot recognize God, it will be totally impossible to be able to isolate the Daba world. So, now the two ailments of Samuel's spiritual journey was articulated. So we are going to try using Bible study to solve the first problem that Samuel had so that it will become possible for us to receive the Daba. Alright? So the first problem that Samuel had was that he, he did not know the Lord. He could not recognize the Lord. If the Lord should pass by him he will, not, he will think he's somebody else. He will think he's John. He will think he's Jennifer. 
He will think it's Alphonsus. And it will never occur to him that it's God. And because of his inability to recognize that it is God that just passed by, it was impossible for him to receive the word of the Lord. That is the state of this individual called Samia. And it happens to be the state of most of us that are in this auditorium. You pray, you fast sometimes, you do evangelism, but if an analysis is done, it, it will be gathered that the issue with your spiritual life is that you cannot recognize the Lord. That means the Lord has been making advances. But his advances have been somewhat futile because of your inability to recognize him. So the question tonight which we need to answer quickly it is begging desperately for a response is how do we recognize God? How to recognize God? So that's what my teaching is about. Hallelujah. I think I need to show us two scriptures. I'm not sure you need them yet. Let's, let's start with John. If there is an assurance that you need the scriptures, we will fetch them. But let me test the ground and see the level of your hunger. Now, the other day we were full and they brought serious food. Even though the food was attractive, we could not eat because we were already full. So even in, the, in terms of the word of God, it's also like that. Maybe you are full. And uh, it doesn't matter the delicacy that is presented before you. Your state of being full disqualifies you from what is available. In the book of John chapter 3, beginning from verse 1, we are still trying to find out how do you recognize God? Because of the abstract nature of the lecture, I'm going to do a theoretical part, which is what I'm doing now. Then I will do a practical part so that you can know it from the scriptures and see how it plays out. Hoping that that will facilitate your advancement in being able to recognize there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Are you with me? All right. Now, you see, let me not go into verse 1 and verse 2. Verse 3 is my interest. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In this scripture, Jesus presents an experiential definition. An experiential definition of what it means to be born again. The closest time, I've studied the teachings of Jesus again and again, and I'm still studying them. One thing I discovered that Jesus will hardly do when he is teaching his definition of terminologies. Jesus will hardly define terminologies. Hardly. I can show you the few places in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John where Jesus defined any terminology. Jesus will prefer to give you an illustration of the concept 
than to define the concept. These concepts are organic, experiential concepts. And if we put a definition to it, it is going to make it cerebral. And it will lend itself to a carnal man easily. So, what Jesus does is that he illustrates it. This was one of the opportunities that Jesus had to define what it meant to be born again. Paul was better with definitions. Paul was about definitions. He would say, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So, Paul was so much into definitions and um, Jesus was into explanations. Are you with me? Jesus' teachings were descriptive and Paul's teachings were prescriptive. I don't know if you understand that. All right. I know you don't. But it's okay. It's okay. So Jesus now comes and says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That means there are so many things you can do when you are not born again. But you will have to be born again in order for you to be able to see the kingdom of God. Is that so? Now, my concern here is the Greek word for see. The Greek word for see is ido. Ido means to perceive by use of senses. Are you there? It's just like, what's your name? Young man with sky blue shirt. What? Kelvin. Ah, that your name is difficult. Who has a simple name, please? What? Okay, this guy's name is called Stephen. Stephen, do you realize that when you were in your mother's womb, at nine months, you already had developed eyes? But you see, the eyes were not functional. The eyes were not relevant in the womb because the eyes were not de designed to function in the womb. So Stephen had to be born into this world before his eyes became relevant. Is that so? Now Stephen had ears when he was in his mother's womb. His ears were not designed for the womb. And so the ears were not necessarily functional. Until he was born, then his ears began to pick sound waves. His, the hearing was activated upon birth. Jesus is saying that the experience of being born again, are you there? The moment you became born again, you had spiritual senses inherent in your spirit, built into your spirit, and those your spiritual senses are receptacles. But you had to be born again first before those, your spiritual senses became relevant. Just like he had to be born in order for his physical senses to become relevant, you need to be born again in order for your spiritual senses to become relevant and then you can perceive the activity that is obtainable in the kingdom of God. Did you get that? Please be seated. I know you didn't get it. Now listen, I will explain again. Um, this is my tablet is an Android tablet uh, Sister Judith what kind of phone do you have? Samsung? Is it Samsung? or Apple? Alright so she has Samsung when you go to the market and you get a Samsung phone without inserting the SIM card into the phone the phone can achieve some things you the touch light will be functional you can put a memory card insert a memory card use it to hear music you can download some movies into the phone and then you watch it at your own spare time so the phone is useful but you did not buy the phone because of touch light you did not buy the phone because of music 
The full potential of the phone will be realized the moment you insert a SIM card. The SIM card has the ability to intermeddle with the GSM network and to bring the network into the environment of the phone. The phone can now take advantage of the GSM network to give you services that you cannot get any other way. Right? That's what happened to you when you gave your life to Christ. The Holy Spirit is a SIM card inserted into your human spirit. And the moment it comes into your human spirit, it gives you access to the realities that are obtainable within the network algorithm, which is the kingdom of God. So you can access the kingdom of God. And all the things that are in the kingdom of God are accessible to you just because you inserted a SIM card. That means your potential... Are you with me? Your potential has increased. The potential you now have is not just your natural potential. Part of what your potential is, is the capacity of the Spirit of God that has been brought into your human spirit. And the ability for your human spirit to manage the new opportunities and possibilities that are obtainable because the presence of the Holy Spirit is trapped in your human spirit. So Jesus said, if you become born again, that's when and only when you have capacity to idle, idle, to use your spiritual senses in discerning and, and perceiving things that are locked up in the realm of God. So if we want to teach you how to know God, are you there? Are you following me? The first lesson I will teach you is how to read the signs of your spiritual senses. Because your ability to perceive God. Samuel's problem was that he could not decode God. He could not perceive God. Even though God calls him and he hears Samuel, the meaning of what he has heard is we take him somewhere where God is not. Are you, are you following? He heard the thing. But his interpretation of the thing is an indication of the fact that he did not discern God in it. So for him, it was just human or useless. So he couldn't profit with what the GSM card, the SIM card, is bringing into his environment. He cannot profit from it because he cannot discern God in the mix. So, in the New Testament, the arrangement that God has put in place to help us discern God is that the Holy Spirit comes into our regenerated human spirit. The Holy Spirit is the agency of quickening. So he revives our human spirit. And now that he has revived our human spirit, our human spirit through the Holy Ghost that is in the spirit can now read the things that are happening in the realm of God. It means you have been equipped to be able to discern God, to be able to know God, because the instrument through which you can know God is the very life of God that is in your spirit man. So this matter I'm talking about tonight, for people that are not born again, it doesn't apply to you. You are outside of the circumference of these possibilities. So the first thing I will have to do, there are actually three things we need to do on the lessons of knowing God. First thing I have to do is unveil to you your spiritual senses. Then the second thing I need to do is to show you how the senses operate and how the operation of the senses can give you the sense of discerning God. Exactly. And then the third thing I need to do is to show you how the word of the Lord comes to a man that God wants to deal with. Except you know how to receive the word of the Lord, you are not effective in prosecuting destiny. Because the utensil that God is going to make available to equip you for destiny is his spoken word. And if you cannot discern God, you will be totally incapacitated in your ability to receive the word of the Lord. Did you get it to that point? 
All right, so let's do the teaching aspect. The first spiritual sense is in the book of John chapter 5, verse 20 and 21. Now, the technical man, would you help me with the scriptures so that I can be fast? Because this is a digression from my real lecture. This is a diploma course. This is a prerequisite for the real diet. And if you don't get this prerequisite, it will be difficult for you to understand the real diet. Now, this is Jesus speaking. In the book of John chapter 5, Jesus unveils his secrets. The secrets that he has in ministry. He says, for the father loveth the son and showeth him all things that himself doeth and he will show him greater works than these that he may marvel. Now part of the manifestation of the love of God was captured in the fact that God shows people he loves visions of what he's doing. And this spiritual sense is the sense of sight. And when God opens your sight, your sense of sight, to discern him, it is actually an indication of God's boundless love. For instance, the Bible says, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. The reason why we pray is because we have a hope that God will answer. But the reason why God wants you to pray is not for answers. Even though in the process of praying, he will make answers available and satisfy your own desire. But beyond the answers, he will take you into the economy of visions. After the answers, he will take you to the place where visions are. He will show you great and mighty things. And meanwhile, you were not praying to see great and mighty things. That was God's addition. To take you from the realm of answers to the realm of showing. And we see that in the ministry of Jesus, he was able to see what the Father was doing. Okay, next verse. Next verse, verse 21. He said, As the Father raised up the dead and quickened them, even so, the Son quickened whom he will. You see, in Jesus' ministry, Jesus was doing copycat. He will see what the Father wants to do, then he will come out in the open and begin to copy exactly what he saw the Father do. And it is the Father that comes to back up what he's doing with signs and wonders. Because the thing that he's doing is consistent with what him, the Father, is doing. Are you there? Okay, I think you are coming up now. Second scripture. You know, it's a refresher course. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25 to 27. So the first spiritual sense that I'd like you to articulate is what we call the sight of affection. It is a proof of the love of God. God opens your eyes to see the things that he's doing. Go to verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, but choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater than the riches, than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of reward. 27. By faith. He forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing whom is invincible. The, the, the message there is the reason why Moses continued. The reason why he endured was because he saw him who is invincible. So when you find someone that is in, 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 in persecution because of their conviction, and the person refuses to change, the persecution is heated, the consequences are grievous for his conviction, but he refuses to change. 
The reason why he can endure is because he saw something. Your Christianity is going to be weak and beggarly if there's no root that fastens your soul like an anchor. These men, the reason why their stories is supernormal is because there were things that God did to them that took away doubt from their corridor. Part of what God did to Moses was that he himself, who is invisible, was on display before Moses. And Moses saw him. Aye. He was no longer afraid of Pharaoh. So the question I have for you today is, what says thou? Because if your spiritual eyes are not yet open, you are, you are compromised looking for where to happen. That's number one. Number two. So, this is sight. Are you there? Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verse 10. Second one. Sorry, it's 10 verse 9. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 9. And on the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. And he saw heaven open. And a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet neat at the four corners, and let down into the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice unto him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. That's what we call the hearing of faith. It's the hearing that comes to the instrumentality of the ears of your spirit. So Peter exercised the hearing of faith because his receptacle was in alignment. So he could see the visions of God. He could hear the voice of God. This is the daba that I'm talking about. You see, your spiritual senses give you the opportunity to be able to recognize God. And it is only those that can recognize God that can receive the word of the Lord. There was no prophet in the entire Bible that God raised that God did not teach how to receive the word of the Lord. Are you there? So if God is going to walk on your life and take you deeper into, you know, himself, he will need to be able to give you the Daba word. So we see the hearing of faith. Peter hearing things that are not audible. Hearing the mind of God. Hearing the heartbeat of God. Hearing the present revelation position of the spirit. This is one of the possibilities that we have. Given the receptacle that we have received. That's number two. Are you there? All right, number three, John chapter 13, beginning from verse one, because I need to do this, it's a side course, so that you can get it before we go back to the lecture. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of the world unto the Father. Are you still here? Can you please underline the word knew. When Jesus knew, underline it, that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world. Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Verse 2. And supper being ended, and the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Verse 3. Jesus, knowing, underline knowing, that the Father has given all things into his hands, Jesus, knowing that he was come from God, 
Jesus knowing that he went to God. The third spiritual sense is what we call the knowing of revelation. It's a kind of knowing that you know, not because you went to a library, attended a lecture, or came out with inferences from a lab. It's a knowing that is handed out to you. It's a knowing by which you know, you don't know why you know or how you know, but yet you know. It's a knowing of revelation. And it will interest you to know that 70% of the speakings of God are in this form. If you don't master anything, master the knowing of revelation. Because it is through this form of enlightenment that... Ah, are you here? Now, I think I need to tell us the difference between spectacular and supernatural. When most of you expect God, when you are praying and you are expecting God to encounter you, the idea you have in your mind is spectacular. Maybe something like a bright light will appear and then somebody will speak, my daughter, my daughter. It will not happen in your lifetime. It will not happen. Even if it happens, it might happen like one time. So that is spectacular. That's not God's normal way of getting the attention of people. You might read the, the story of Apostle Paul, how he saw a great light, and that's spectacular. And if I'm not mistaken, in the entire life of Apostle Paul, there was never a time that he had any other spectacular encounter of that nature. There is a difference between spectacular and supernatural. The way you will know that what is locked up in your heart is supernatural is that when you think back and say, was I thinking on this matter before it showed up? And you were not thinking about it, it just dropped. That is supernatural. You see, the Holy Ghost is the one that is inside of you. So if God is going to do anything, his workshop is inside. For the Bible says that it is God that worketh in us. So if you are going to perceive the mind of God, it's going to come from within you. It will precipitate from inside of you. And the knowing of revelation happens to be the most common approach that God actually registers his present revelation position. Jesus knew that the hour has come that he should be taken out of this world. Jesus knew that he was come from God. Jesus knew that he was going back to God. So my question is, what do you know from God? What do you know? If you know nothing from him, you can do nothing for him. Please help me preach to your neighbor. If you know nothing from him, you can do nothing for him. He knew that his time had come. For any man that is in sync with God, you will know when your pilgrimage through this life comes to an end. And I can show you examples of people like Apostle Paul. He knew that his time was come. I can show you examples of people like Peter. He knew that his time had come. I can show you examples of people like Jesus. He knew that his time had come. He was not in the dark as to what the understanding of his, the seasons of his pilgrimage upon the face of the earth was about. Are you there? He knew that his, the hour had come that he should depart out of this world. He knew that he was come from God. He knew that the Father has given all things into his hands. He knew that he was going back to God. Now, if, if, you, if you come in contact with somebody and you want to break the person using torture, all right, you can do so, nothing to a man that knows. Because what you are doing to him is only affecting his body. What he knows, he knows in his spirit. Just like this man called Joseph, they took away the coat of many colors that Joseph had. But there was something that they could never take away. And that was what he received by the Holy Ghost. 
It doesn't matter. You can take his vehicle. You can take his house. You can take his land. But you cannot take what he received by the knowing of revelation. And if you cannot take that, he will produce another land. He will produce another house. He will produce... Is somebody listening to me tonight? He knew. So what do you know? What do you know? So I was before God today, most of today, just pressing into the spirit in order to know what he wants me to do this night. Because if you ask me of what I want, there are so many things I want. But you see, ministering this night is not about what I want. It's about what he wants. So I had to be indoors for about seven hours. So in, in the seventh hour, I know what God wants to do. For instance, there is a lady that is in this place that um, when you were born, you were dedicated to a certain deity. You didn't know anything about this until you got to the age of 21 and then your dreams started becoming so terrible, so terrible. Things appearing to you, you, uh, you are in the midst of people you don't know, uh, you eat strange menu in your dreams. Uh, part of what will happen is that that lady will be delivered here today. No, wait, wait. No. Don't clap. If what I said does not come to pass, then what I'm teaching is a lie. Alright? Because if it's not possible for me to know what I'm coming to encounter here on my knees, it means that what I'm teaching about spiritual senses it's just a waste of time. Are you with me? There is also a young man that came here. The, the young man is the only person that is born again in uh, his family. And this young man is aware of the fact that his family is into fetish, fetish things, diabolical things. But he's the only one that is born again at this time. And the young man is actually afraid if some of the things that his people do will not influence and affect him. Part of what God wants to do in this service is to empower that young man so that the authority that the young man will have will be much more higher that this just, just leave it. All right? Now, if you stay in the presence of God long enough, this knowing will be activated. This sense of perception will be activated. The moment this sense of perception is activated, you have now discovered God's lines of commitment to your engagement. God is saying that I'm committed to your mission. God is saying that I will not deny you when you stand on the stage. Because God doesn't have that nature. What he, he says to you in the secret, it will come out in the open and he will perform it. Because it's not a man that he should lie, neither is it the son of man that he should repent. Are you there? I also know that during the course of this service, all kinds of chains, chains that have been used to bind people, will be broken. Now, you see, I told you the amen is not necessary. When you listen to 9 o'clock news, you don't say amen. What I'm saying is news. I'm casting news. And that this news I'm casting will happen. You see, I've worked with Jesus for a while to know his ways and to know how to trap him so that he will come and perform what he has said. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So what I'm saying to you is not trial and error. It must happen as long as the sun will rise tomorrow. What I've told you must happen here today. Now, the reason why I can be this bold is because I understand that in order for me to discern God, you will discern him through his workings on your receptacle. Your receptacle is the organ that houses your spiritual senses. The Holy Ghost in you is the one that activates that organ and then he begins to 
it begins to pick things, pick things in the realm of God. And that was what Jesus meant when he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Did you get it to that point? All right, so we can go back to First Samuel, let me continue my teaching. So the first thing that God does to you when you become born again, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and you begin to exercise yourself speaking in tongues regularly. When I say regularly, I'm, I'm talking about going beyond three hours. I will explain. Don't worry. I will explain what I mean. I will explain. Because if, if the objective of our engagement is to see the activation of our receptacle so that we can perceive God, we can recognize God and receive the word of the Lord, then you will need to go beyond three hours. It is when you have heat three hours in tongues and above that your spiritual eyes can now open in snapshots your spiritual organs can begin the, the work of perception. It takes a lot of spiritual energy to deploy the use of your receptacle. And experientially, I can tell you that you need to invest mechanically, mechanical energy of speaking in tongues for about three hours, more than three hours, in order for you to have a very robust perspective of what God is offering you in the realm of the spirit. So anybody, any believer that you see that does not pray three hours regularly, and when I say regularly, I mean at least twice a week. And these three hours, I'm saying you don't need to do it at once. You can do it in the morning. Then you can do two in the evening. Even if you miss the next day. And you do two in the morning on Wednesday, one in the evening, your spirit will still be in vitality. Are you there? You are, not, you are not with me? Now, I'm teaching you that from the experiential position. Because I've worked in it for more than 27 years. So, I know what it means to sustain a regiment, a spiritual regiment that traps the dimensions of God around your life. I know what to do now, for instance, that will bring God here. And I do not say it boastfully. My regiment guarantees that. The strength of a believer that knows God is in his ability to perceive God. If we bring somebody that is dead here, and we say, hey, bro, somebody has died. Whether you are irrelevant concerning the situation that, took, that has happened is determined by your understanding of how the receptacle works. If you are totally helpless about the situation, it means you have not yet gained mastery of the operation of your receptacle. Because the Bible teaches us that with God, all things are possible. So, Getting that guy to rise from the dead is not a problem with God. The only problem that I may have is my ability to contact God about the situation. My ability to perceive what God is saying about the situation. If you have a problem contacting God and perceiving the Dabar, then you are helpless concerning your generation, even though you are born again. Then you are helpless concerning your family, even though you are born again then you are even helpless concerning your destiny even though you are born again. Because the devil will ensure that you, if you don't have the advantage that comes from the Holy Ghost, you are no match to the devil. <laughs> Aye. Hallelujah. And that's why the Bible says that the spirit of a man shall sustain his infirmity. If you want to grow, grow big in your spirit. Grow very big there. As you are putting knowledge in the soil of your soul, labor to build capacity in the spirit. Because it is your spirit capacity that will bear the weight of your infirmity and take you beyond the limits of your infirmity 
into the economy of dominion. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. All right, let me show you something quickly. Then I will stop talking. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 21. So the first time that God appeared to Samuel, God wanted to communicate to Samuel. Where's my man here? Where's my man from yesterday? I, I made a friend here. Okay. What's your name? Huh? Isaac. All right, sir. The first time that God appeared in Shiloh, Samuel had a problem with recognizing him. So God now took this young prophet to schooling and taught him about his spiritual senses. About how he illuminates his spiritual senses in order for him to perceive the things that God is doing. When he became perfect on the workings of his spiritual senses, God now came back to Shiloh. And verse 21 says, And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the Daba word of God. See, it was easy now for Samuel to identify that it was the Lord. And the moment Samuel could identify that it was the Lord, it was also, also easy for him to receive the Daba. So the moment your spiritual senses are in optimum condition it is easy for you to receive the word of the lord and the strength of any spiritual man is his capital for the believer's victory is in his ability to secure the counsel of god for a matter are you there the ability to secure the counsel of god for a matter that means if your receptacle is healthy you can consult with God and say, okay, Lord, what will I do under these circumstances? And then instantly, he goes into action. And then you are able to discern him and decode him. Sometimes he doesn't speak in, with words. He just comes with knowings. Sometimes he doesn't even come with knowings. It comes with a vision. Your ability to interpret that vision and to know what is the mind of God in that in the metaphors that are contained in the vision is what separates a master from a learner. But I pray that the Lord will take us higher in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. A woman, I, I traveled for so long and when I came back home, one of our aunties in the ministry, was so excited that I had come back, and she said, yes, my daughter is getting married, and I'm coming with her for you to bless her tomorrow. I said, oh, that's great. So I came early to the office, and the woman came with the daughter to come and greet. And then I looked upon the lady, I said, ah, this, this your daughter is dead. Hey, the woman said, you have started again. What, what is happening? I said, all right. Let me show you an example of the fact that this lady is not alive. So I, I just prayed. She fell on the floor. And then this, this black, the black, I don't know what's called, the black one. He went up. Only the white one could, was visible. I said, this thing here, I know this thing. Then I began to give her a lecture of what was going on with the daughter. Then I casted out the spirit of death. I said, okay, now you, this your daughter can marry and make a home. She didn't know that a time bomb was already set. So that a few days after they have celebrated the daughter's wedding, they will be going for burial. You will be a victim as long as you cannot decode the movements of God on your receptacle. 
the greatest training that any discipler can give you <laughs> is this training I'm giving you today. This training, traditionally, if I'm doing it at home, is 21 days, this training. Because after every lecture, we are going to exercise our spirit until everybody can pick it. And it normally takes a 10-hour drill for your spirit to come to that level. Yes, I have built my spirit to survive in the winter. If the temperature is, is harsh, I built myself to be able to survive. Even if the Antichrist will come now, I will survive. Yes, I built, yeah, I built myself to be able to survive under adverse conditions. Most of us are still leaning on the facilities of the age. And you have not built the facility of the spirit to be able to survive if the age decides to withdraw their support. You are leaning on the age. But that was not how Jesus was. For the Bible says that the prince of this world came for an inspection on his life and found nothing in him. That was the first time Satan found an individual that was living in the earth but not leaning on any infrastructure that the world had built. If you want to live that way, you will need to invest in your spirit. A lot of you ladies believe that, okay, I'm beautiful, I'm going to get by by my beauty. You will, be, you will uh, your doubts will be cleared in a few years. May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> Is there a tennis court on this campus? Tennis court. Basketball court. Football court. Those are prayer grounds. The reason why the school built it is for prayer. That was, where, that was where we mastered how to communicate with God. There was no time of the night that the tennis court was empty. No time. There were people building capacity for 20 years to come. 15 years to come. They were securing marriages, securing children on, on the tennis court. So, by the time they were graduating, they did not only leave the campus with a sheet of paper that stated that they had completed education at the basic level. They were, they were also graduating with medals in the spirit that guaranteed that they had the capacity and authority to prosecute destiny. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Now, why is my friend still logged out? What's happening? To, who is in charge of this sound? Hey. Okay, reduce your volume. Reduce your volume. Now, there's a reason why I need him. Let me explain. Ah, no. You see, I am like Elisha. Elisha needs a minstrel. Is it the keyboard that is bad? Or, or the person there is manipulating it? Okay, reduce your volume. I will tell you when to increase it. Hey. Okay, if you go too low, you will not be able to. Okay. for two minutes so that we can do practicals. We'll do practicals for five minutes. Then I will continue. Trust me, you don't need to believe. No. That... You know, people say, have faith. You don't need to believe. What I have told you will happen today.
All right. Why? So what is wrong with? Is it the? teach you the practical side. Uh, okay. Shut, shut down. Shut down. Let me teach you the practical side. We want to activate the use of our spiritual senses. The first thing you need to do, forget about your neighbor. Forget about the person sitting by your side. Maybe you came with your brother, came with your wife. Forget him. Focus your soul on him only. Can you try that? And when you focus, can you achieve that? For if you need to close your eyes to achieve this, it's a very good, wonderful attempt. Focus on Jesus alone, not the preacher. And then we'll begin to speak in tongues. Are you with me? So begin to exercise your spirit by speaking in the Holy Ghost. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. So light <laughs> Jebinando hombres kito bega balai to compres ku fitabina hantelia iko baba balata kusketia bramina kanta kusketo brondo bokoria siko prela habalai to kobela mata yi ranto sketo mina hante bregede ku baba balai to kabande abranske to bina kaita ku prehesketia tanto la Mande le baboria skito preza mande kuria bane hasika palanto kosketa brikata le dakaito kombilame ababa hasai ko presko pila breminale thank you father in the name of jesus if your spirit is already charged it will take you 15 minutes to hook up to network. I beheld in the spirit. Don't worry. I beheld in the spirit and I saw a, a young lady. An angel of the Lord came with wings, two wings, and put on that young lady. And she mounted up to high places in the heavenlies. Now bring them. You know, if, if what I'm saying is my own, God will not confirm it. Meanwhile, while I was saying it, you didn't believe, but it didn't stop the manifestation. So one man's faith. Are you with me? It is a gift. God... God is inviting you to the place where secrets are given. In order for you, are you with me? Stay with me. Stay with me. In order for you, to pick things, you need to surrender. Surrender this your heart. Surrender it. And allow God to, 
it will ah. there are so many outlets that god can use to connect you with what he's doing can we try again now if you are still holding to something in the natural you will not mount up you, your greatest distraction is the person when you come to church don't sit close to your relatives your greatest distraction is that person that you have known that you came from came with from home it will it will distract you when you want to close up can we try again forget about the person open your heart and just exercise your spirit exercise your spirit exercise your spirit exercise your spirit isa ham breast coffee laminate Gombre his cosa minahante. Mahusa Saliko Brasketobina. Endominian de his cassiso brante curia bama halanto sketia. Egoze sanante kuda bala catelia. Ento benahiko salikanto bresko tama hantalia endo hole kabaske tobina anto mena santo keto brisko fatalia endo kabresko fela bando si kabreska teli mohonde. Now listen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I saw two cloven tongues of fire descend from heaven. Now, when, when you see a sign in the realm of the spirit, you need to ask, what is the meaning of this sign? Then God will now. Are you, are you there? All right, so there are two evangelists. The tongues of fire is referring to the ministry of an evangelist. Two evangelists are here. And God is giving you the authority to be able to cast out devils in a most unique way. These two people are going to receive an empowerment from God that will make it very easy for them to spot demonic activity and to deal with them. So, if what I've said is true, Father, if what I just said is true, confirm it. Now listen. The Lord has released. The Lord has released one angel into this auditorium. The activity of an angel has been activated in this auditorium. There are three ladies. Three ladies, the Lord says, you are going to carry his presence from place to place. You will carry his presence from place to place. So right now you are being clothed with the presence of God where you are sitting. You are being clothed with his presence and it is intensifying. It's becoming stronger, it's becoming stronger, becoming stronger. Becoming stronger, becoming stronger, becoming stronger. You will carry his presence. You will carry his presence. It's becoming stronger, becoming stronger, becoming stronger, becoming stronger. Holy Ghost. You were designed to carry his presence. To carry his presence. To carry his presence. To carry his presence.
You know, like I told you when I started preaching, that there is someone that was dedicated to a demonic altar, and the presence of that altar has been following you around. In the next 21 seconds, the hand of God will touch you. In the next 21 seconds. Father, that one that is a victim of demonic dedication, anywhere that individual is, let your hand come upon that one. Come upon that one. Now bring that lady for deliverance. Bring her for deliverance. Now listen. Is it possible for you to listen? Oh. Oh. Lamo Moseli Bokoria Bahasa Leibande. Where is the lady with black? Yes, that's the one that was dedicated. Bring her. Let's cast the evil spirit out. Lose her. Ah. Uh -uh. Okay, wait. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Wait, wait. Now, you people are not strong enough. Uh, I need two strong brothers to help me here. Uh, those sisters, eh? Live there. She was dedicated to an idol. So we are going to break the yoke. If you are still with me, say Amen. Uh, so this is the only amen you can give in UDS. Uh -huh. Hey. <laughs> now, you see, you are not interested, so don't worry. I would have taught you how to cast out devils. Let her go. I bring torment to you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I bring you torment. And I say, let her go. Where are you? Come. Okay. Come. The spirit is troubling this lady. Eh? He's standing here. So put your hand there. So let her go. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. You can't speak in tongues. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If your spiritual senses are activated, you can inquire of God. I say stop it, stop it, stop it. You can inquire of God. That means there's a situation on ground. You don't know how to handle it. Then you inquire. Like, I didn't know how to help this lady. So I inquired. He said, the umbilical cord. That was what was extracted from the lady that was used for the covenant. That's why I called this lady to do what she's doing. Are you following what I'm talking about? No, you are not falling. Okay. No problem. It's all right. Um, what I'm doing is still lecture. I've not finished my lecture. This is lecture, practical. Sister, come. How are you? Do you? Do you know that an evil spirit has left you? Yes, daddy. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, this covenant, let it be destroyed forever. Let this lady fulfill her capacity, fulfill her ministry, fulfill her purpose. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Go. Now, it's obvious you don't want to learn. So, I want to teach you practicals. If all we know how to do is to talk, we cannot help our generation. What's that second case that I mentioned? I mentioned two cases. I've forgotten it. Who can help me? Yes, the young man. What, what, what did I say about the young man? Yes, the young man. There's a young man. He's the only one that is saved in his family currently. And his family members are into fetish things. Young man, where are you? Come. Wait, bring the, bring the lady. Yeah? Okay, you are one of them. Don't worry. I know you might be two or three or four, but I'm looking for one person. And the Lord will show me who the person is. Just, just stand. Just stand. This is still part of the lectures. Yes, yeah, so um, where is the person? Where is my friend of yesterday? Interview them. I'm looking for somebody. Two days ago, you had a dream and you saw yourself flying. Two, two nights ago, you had a dream, you saw yourself flying. It's you I'm looking for. Where's the person? Two nights ago, you had a dream and you were flying in that dream. There was a danger situation and you were flying away from it. Through that flight, you were delivered from what was pursuing you. Where are you? Come quickly, come quickly. If you are coming for what I'm saying, wave your hand so that I will know. So let him go. Let him go. Lose him. Okay, the demon is on his chest. Put your hand there. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Yeah, it will come out. Young man. Yeah, what happened to you? Um, I'm, the f I'm the only one. Yeah. I'm the only one that gave my life to Christ in my family. Okay. I'm looking for a young man two nights ago. Is he, he can be a young man or a young lady. Two nights ago, you had a dream. You were being pursued, but you took a flight. Come. You also. Now, two of you, those in this category stand here. No, let them just stand somewhere. I'm looking for one person, even though... So, why are these ones standing here? The only people born again and they are... All right, so I'm actually looking for... It's not all of you. You are too many. But the Lord will show me. Lord, so I will just touch you just slightly on your head like this. I will touch you slightly on your head just like this. All right. So the Lord will now help me do what I cannot do. Father, I have touched them. Show me the one you are talking about. Show me by power. Show me by power. Show me by power. Now the rest of you go and sit down. So. Ah. 
Okay. Okay. So now, the protection that you need, oh brother, from what is going on in your family is what God has given you. You people, you saw somebody chasing you, then you now took a flight. Why are you here? Uh -huh. Okay. You fled. You began to fly. Now, listen to me. Are you, are you following me? I'm looking for one of you. One of you is in danger. Serious danger. But I will find out. So what I will do is that I'll just touch you like this. Very slight touch. Huh? Shut up. Father, that one that is in danger among them and the specific individual that you are speaking about, let the touch of your anointing show me the individual. Let the touch of your anointing, the touch of your anointing, the touch of your anointing, show me the individual by the touch of the anointing. So the Lord will come close to you. To come, he will come. Or in fact, he's even coming now. By the touch of the anointing. By the touch of the anointing. Let it be intensified. Let it be intensified. Let it be intensified. Show me the one you are talking about. The one that is in danger. The one that is in danger. So that that one can be delivered. So that that one can be delivered. Show me. The rest of you go and sit down. Come. We'll take you out from danger will take you out from affliction. will take you out from the domain of injury in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Now, I think I provided sufficient evidence that it's possible for your spiritual senses to be effective. Anywhere you are seated, anywhere you are seated, listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. If you are here tonight under the sound of my voice and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, you are outside of what I'm trying to describe. Because Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Your spiritual senses can only become operational when you are in Christ Jesus. And if you are here tonight, you believe the preacher, and God is knocking at the door of your heart, it's an opportunity for you to come into the kingdom of God. So if you are here, you want to respond yes to Jesus. You want to say yes to his call to salvation. All you need to do is to put your right hand on your chest. When you have put your right hand on your chest, raise your left hand up so that the preacher can see you. Right hand on your chest, left hand up. Do not allow Satan win the argument over your life. Right hand on your chest, left hand up. If you are raising it, stand to your feet so that the preacher can see you. Right hand on your chest, left hand up. Stand to your feet so that the preacher can see you in the name of Jesus. Are you on your feet? If you're on your feet, you can come to the front of the stage here so that I can lead you to the Lord. Just leave your seat and come here. It is serious business. Do not allow Satan win the argument over your life. Come from your seat and come right here before the altar. Jesus is calling you. Jesus is calling you. Jesus is calling you.
Forget about the person. Don't consult with anybody. Don't consult. Just match here. Match here. You came with your boyfriend. Came, leave the person and come respond to Jesus. Leave the person and come respond to Jesus. I'm waiting for those of you upstairs. Right hand on your chest. Left hand up. People outside, I'm waiting for them. Join in quickly so that we can pray a powerful miracle prayer afterwards. There are seven people I'm waiting for in this congregation. Seven people that I'm waiting for. I pray the Lord give you the grace to rebel against the devil. Seven individuals that I'm still waiting for. Seven individuals that I'm still waiting for. If you are already standing in the front, begin to ask him for mercy. Say, show mercy. Show mercy on me. Have mercy. Have mercy on me. Have mercy. Have mercy. Purge me. I present myself to you. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I'm still waiting for three individuals. Three individuals. Have mercy. Have mercy. Those of you on the balcony, you are welcome. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Have mercy. Have mercy. Do not allow Satan win the argument over your soul. Just in case you sense that there is a knock of God on your heart. There is a knock of God. It is time to jump at it. It is time to run into it. God is opening the door of salvation to you and you can jump at it this moment. Those of you in the front begin to ask him for mercy. As you ask him for mercy, let him know what you have done. I have given money for people to commit abortion. Tell him. I have committed two abortions so far. Let him know. Let him know. Repent before him. Repent profusely before him and he will receive you into his kingdom. Hallelujah. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Repeat these words after me and mean it from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I accept that I am a sinner. I cannot help myself. Have mercy on me. Wash me in your blood. Write my name in the book of life. Give me the power to live for you. All the days of my life, every covenant I entered into, knowingly or unknowingly destroyed, this moment, I surrender my life. I surrender my all. Accept me into your kingdom today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Yes, where are the counselors? Please look that way. You will see the counselors. Look that way. Just go to them. You will feel the sleep and then you join the miracle service. Everyone in the congregation, you can rise on your feet at this time. We want to pray two prayer points this evening. The first prayer point is that the Lord will quicken our receptacle to be able to discern him, to be able to identify him. Can somebody call upon the name of the Lord this moment? Open my receptacle. Oh, I cannot hear your voice. Ask him 
to open your receptacle so that you can pick things you can receive the word of the Lord you can receive the counsel of God for every issue every matter The Lord wants to use you as his instrument. He wants to use you as his vessel. He wants to use you as his man. Glory to God. Let your spiritual senses come alive in the name of Jesus. Yela kose tamina kadia brante kobe lokose ya. Indo bobo saprakatala. Can you just lift up your hands unto Jesus? Iko bres kofila mahasaike. Mantoke babo sabara na nani koskabi. Rabo tabi na sipro konte baba laito. Jesus is mine. Jesus is tonight if I say in the name of Jesus you say amen in the name of Jesus ah. there 
reason why I'm asking you to say amen is because if you say it, it will give me the opportunity to see. Listen, there is somebody in this congregation. The spirit of death is hovering over you. It's hovering over you. It's hovering over you. Father, that one that death, death is hovering over from the balcony to the main floor to the choir stand, anywhere that individual is. Stretch forth your hand and locate that individual. Locate that individual. Locate that individual. Stretch forth your hand. Locate that individual. Let your hand come strong. Ah, wait, wait. Can you keep quiet? Keep quiet. I didn't say you should pray. We are trying to help somebody. There's somebody we need to help and it's an emergency. Father, anywhere that individual that death is hovering over is. Stretch forth your hand and identify the person. Locate 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 the person. In the name of Jesus. Ushers, help me bring that individual. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Have you found the individual? Ushers. Ushers are not responding to me again. In the name of Jesus. Are these the people I'm looking for? Bring them here. Let's break the yoke. There is still one I'm waiting for. Death wants to take that life. And I'm sent to you. I'm sent to you. I'm sent to you. To take away that death from you. So I break the yoke of death. I break the yoke of death. Ace. 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 Go from high in the name of Jesus. Go from high in the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. This is the one I'm looking for from her in the name of Jesus. Let the yoke of death hovering over you. Let it break. Let it break. Let it break. Let it break in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hey. The Lord wants to remove somebody's glasses tonight. He wants to remove somebody's glasses. You, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the finger of death. Can you remove those glasses and put your hand on the eye? Put your hand there. Put your hand there. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind every blinding spirit. Blinding spirit be bound. Blinding spirit be bound. Blinding spirit be bound. Come out of the eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of the eyes. 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 Asthma, go in the name of Jesus. Now I command the eyes. Eyes. See in Jesus' name. See in Jesus' name. See in Jesus' name. Remove your hand and begin to conduct a test. Ah. 
as I speak to you, two, two eyes are already healed. Let the yoke of death be removed from your life in the name of Jesus. I take away the yoke of death. Loose Let the yoke of death break. 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 Loose her. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's where it is. You are not strong enough. Loose her now. Loose her. Speak in tongues. Not just your, your, your hand has no power. Release. Okay. Thank you, Father. All right. If you notice that there is a change in your sight, there's a change in your sight. Come here quickly. Come here quickly. Come to the pulpit quickly. Come here quickly. Come here quickly. Now I'm going to pray a prayer of deliverance. First, we'll start with your family. I'm waiting for those two individuals. Two eyes have been healed. I'm waiting for you before I can continue. I'm waiting for these two individuals before I can continue. Yeah, yeah, continue doing that. Two eyes have been healed. Check your eyes. Two people have. Okay, let me continue. Maybe I'm wrong. We're going to pray. We'll start with your family. Father, are you still with me? Are you with me? Father, in the name of Jesus. We bring every family present here under your such light. Your such light of scrutiny. If there is anyone that is in bondage on the account of several transactions that have taken place on the family level, tonight, let the yoke break. 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 Second decree. Anyone that has been infected infected with witchcraft under the control of witchcraft either in his academics in his health in his finances that is present here tonight let the yoke break let the yoke break let the yoke break let the yoke break I 
I'm still waiting for the two people that got healed on their eyes. I'm waiting for two of them to come this way. If at the end of my prayer, they are not here, we we'll assume that they are not healed. So I will ask God, return the blindness. It means nobody is implicated. So if I pray like that, it's not. Two, here. If not, when I finish, we'll return it. Where is the person that you arrested just now? There is something rooted in the family. We want to cast it out. Father, in the name of Jesus, I did not hear your amen. I say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Why am I still seeing a grave? I'm still seeing a grave. I'm still seeing a grave. Come out of the 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 grave. Ah, I've been waiting for you. Lusha! Now, this is the person I came to meet in this meeting. Can you do me a favor? We'll pray in tongues for two minutes. I will want to destroy every witchcraft power. I can't hear your cry in the spirit. It's obvious you don't know how to roar. Ayakubenase. <laughs> Embro kumbi na mina siko brami na ita. Shama kate kose hede kadia. Come out of the grave. Come out of the grave. Come out of the grave. In the name of Jesus. You are not meant for the grave. The grave is not your portion. So we destroy every link that you have with the grave will destroy every link that you have with death the power of untimely death we suffocate it we suffocate it we suffocate it in the name of Jesus Christ let the yoke break Isamante Akalo Bokoria Sika Pe Makata Bonda Ola Yeko Bokoskita Yate Konde Mamatia Tangeli Yaska Bosketo Pre Come out of the grave in the name of Jesus Christ We disarm you tonight Every weapon that you came with we neutralize it. We cut it off. We bind the spirit that you came with. We bind it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We destroy the spirit that you came with. And today, we bring you out of the bondage. The bondage that you have been in. 
for so many years in the name of Jesus lose her lose her lose her lose her lose her will not affect the lecturers. Strength death will not affect the, two, the, the students. We will break this covenant, this campus, from every covenant of death in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Give her grace. Give her grace, 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 grace. Father, give them grace. Anyone whose heart is open. is open. Anyone whose heart is open here, deposit grace. Anyone whose heart is open. Anyone. 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 Deposit grace. Anyone whose heart is open here, receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. It will come strong. It will come strong. Is your heart open? Is your heart open? Is it open? If it's open, then receive grace. Receive grace. Receive it. Receive it. It's coming. It's coming. Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. Those of you on the minister seat there, if your heart is open, Father, anyone whose heart is open, deposit grace. Deposit it. Deposit it. It's coming. It's coming stronger. It's coming stronger. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Is your heart open? Father on this road. Okay, come. Let him contact your grace from tonight in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. There's an anointing here. There's an anointing here. You can contact. Oh my God. You can contact it. You can contact it. You can contact it. You can contact it. Yes. You can contact. It will come like a fire. 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 Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. Before I run away, 
If I don't release this anointing, I will not be able to sleep. So you need to help me so that I can sleep. Only a minimum of 24 people can receive it. Father, in the name of Jesus, anyone whose heart is open, deposit this anointing. Deposit this anointing. It's coming. 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 Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. It is your portion. 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 It is your oh my god. There is a powerful oil. It's descending. It's descending. It's descending. Oh my god. There's an oil. There's an anointing. There's an anointing. There's an anointing. You can tap into it. You can receive it. You can receive it. You can receive it. You can receive it. There is a young man. The weight of the glory of God will descend upon you in 17 seconds. In 17 seconds. In 17 seconds. In 17 seconds.
Hallelujah. People of God, with a humble plea, let's settle down. With a humble plea, let's take our seat. With a humble plea, let's take our seat. The move of God is still taking place. Let's take our seat. Apostolic invasion. Apostolic invasion. SCC. SCC. Please, I want to make a very short announcement. Yesterday, something happened. When Daddy left, immediately... We all left. Please, I want to make a humble plea. And with all due respect, please, once daddy leaves, let's not follow him until the program is done. In as much as we all want to encounter with God, please, let's do well to observe some disciplines in the house of God. For the Bible makes it clear that for the reproof of discipline is a way of life. We even realize that some of the doors have been broken. Please, please, People of God, with all due respect, let's take our seats as we invite our chairman, Professor Albert Lugutera, to take over. Please, all protocols should be positioned, well positioned, as Daddy takes over. Amen. We are still in the presence of God. God is still moving, and God can still do, in fact, he's still doing a miracle in your life. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 9, verse 11, I believe, the Bible says that if we have ministered unto you spiritual things, is it a big thing that you minister unto us physical things as well? Amen. I'm here to make a short, uh, a simple plea uh, to each one of us. A great program like this costs a lot of money. How many people agree with that? A great program like this costs a lot of money. And these are the kinds of programs that we need to keep having from, from time to time to be able to stay want to appeal to each and every one of us, if you have a donation, in fact, we are appealing to everyone to make a sacrifice. There is no money anywhere but the one in your pocket and the one in your bank account. And so we are appealing to each and every one of you, whether you are a student, whether you are a staff, whether you are working or you are not working, I believe each and every one of us can make a contribution towards this program. Amen. So if you can give us 100 CD. Right now, please. Is there anybody like that? The Bible tells us in the book of First Kings chapter number 3, 4 and 5. The Bible tells us in that night, the king went to Gibeon, King Solomon went to Gibeon and offered unto God a sacrifice of a thousand bullocks. And then the Bible says that night the Lord appeared to him in the vision. One of the ways to open your...